In this presentation, we will demonstrate building a real-time web interface using HTML HMI, which is a feature included with the product opcwebhmi.net. HTML HMI is an open platform HMI implemented with a jQuery interface communicating to OPC Systems real-time engine that can read and write values to OPC servers, OPC clients, databases, Microsoft Excel, text, binary, and XML files, and Visual Studio.net applications. You can use any HTML editor you like. We will use Notepad to create a web page to prove the point that it's truly open HMI software solution. This is a completely new and lighter interface than our classic ASP.NET Web interface, which is very popular and we released this in 2005 based upon an AJAX, which is still available for ASP.NET Web applications using Visual Studio. With HTML HMI, you can create a clean and simple and robust web interface, but also create HTML5 interfaces, web surface apps, and Windows gadget applications. Here we see some online examples using an open third-party library of HTML elements. A security plugin is included for token access based upon opcsystems.net user security and remote networking to connect to local and remote data sources from where web pages are hosted. Let's see how easy it is to create a new web page with HTML HMI. After you install opcsystems.net, which you can download from the website opcsystems.com, Go to the program group opcsystems.net, select Help, and then the opcsystems.net help. Select the Quick Start Example section, and then select HMI. There you can see you can build different types of HMI applications, all supporting Internet communications. Select the Web HMI section, and here we'll begin step by step. We will follow this guide in this video. The first step is to register the HTML HMI interface. We'll do that with the OPC System Service Manager. That's found under the program group opcsystems.net. Select OPC System Service. When you first install the software, you'll see this interface. If you've already started the services, you want to stop them first. You want to specify a network node name. This is the node name that the remote clients will connect to. So this would be an IP address, a registered domain name, or a network node name that the remote browser clients are going to connect to. You wouldn't use localhost if you plan on running the browsers on multiple computers or multiple devices like iPhones, Androids, or iPads. For demonstration purposes, we'll use localhost because we're only going to browse from this computer. Later in this presentation, you're going to set the server URL property in your HTML code, and this would be the node name that you'll specify as the server URL. We'll select the register button and we'll see that the registration has succeeded. Now we'll start the services. We'll continue on to the next step in the help guide, which is to create a directory on the local hard disk. We'll create a directory on the C drive called My Web HMI. We'll then copy some files from the installation directory of opcsystems.net into this directory. This is typically under Program Files or Program Files x86, Open Automation Software, opcsystems.net, and then HTML HMI. There we want to copy all the files out of CSS and JS subdirectories, and we'll copy those directories in intact. We'll copy them right into the My Web HMI directory. Now we're ready to begin creating our web page, and to get a starting point of a typical web page, we'll just copy what's in step 4 of the opcsystems.net quick start, and we'll paste that right into Notepad. We'll save that file into that directory and choose any name you like, but, choose, but use an extension of HTML. I'll specify a name of My Web HMI. In the body section, you'll put different items at different elements. Let's just copy some pre-done syntax for the HTML HMI code to display a few labels and put in a button into the HTML code. We'll copy those from step 5, step 6, and step 7. In a moment, we'll use the HTML HMI wizard to automatically generate this code for us. Now we'll save our file. And now we'll use IIS to create a virtual directory pointed to that project directory. That's typically found under Administrative Tools, 
and there you see Internet Information Services. If you don't see Internet Information Services, go to Add Remove Programs, and there you'll turn on and off Windows Components, and then you'll see IIS to turn that on. Under your default website, you'll right-click and select to add a virtual directory. Choose any alias name you like. Again, I'm going to choose My Web HMI. Then browse for your project directory with the physical path. And click OK. If you want to have that default page come up, you can go to Default Documents, select Add, and specify My web hmi.html now we're ready to test the web application in any browser go to http colon forward slash localhost my web hmi and because we specify the default document it will automatically bring up our page and there we see a value coming from the OPC system service which is the ramp value and we also have a boolean point which is currently true by clicking on this button, we'll turn the pump off. Now let's see how we can use the HTML HMI wizard to automatically generate some of the code and turn this button back color from green to red. The HTML HMI wizard is found under the program group opcsystems.net. There you can see some common elements that you might want to change, say background color, foreground color, uh, flash items, change the size, change the opacity, make something enabled or disabled or visible or invisible based upon boolean points, change the text of an item or tooltip or set a value. These automated scripts can be applied to CSS code to change all elements assigned to a CSS so you can consider one point goes on and then all of the items associated with the CSS element automatically change to the attributes that you would like. Here under the background color, we can see we can assign up to five different Boolean points, each one of them having the highest priority at the top. And if it's true, the first one's true, then we'll set it to the first color. If it's false, it'll move down to the second tag that's defined, if it is, and change it to the second color that's defined there. We'll select to browse for an opcsystems.net tag. If the OPC systems tag is going to be running on the same service that we're going to be connected to through our server URL, and by the way, in your HTML code, that server URL is specified right here under the head section. So you can consider that your web clients can actually run remotely, and then it could be connecting to a remote server with this name, but yet the tags on that service are still local in that particular service we're pointing to. If you have other tags that are on remote services, different from the service that we're connecting to, you can specify the IP address, network node name, or registered domain name of those other remote services right here. Most commonly you would use local if the web application is going to be connecting to the same server that you're pointed to under the server URL. Here I'm going to connect to the pump value point, and when it's true, it's going to change the color to green. When it's false, it'll change it to red, and if it's bad quality, it'll be yellow. We'll then create the button that says Create HTML, and then select Copy to Clipboard. And then we'll go to the element that we want to assign that news function to. I'm going to go into the button for the pump, and just paste that code right in there. Click Save in Notepad, and then if I still have my browser open, I can refresh it. There we see that the pump is currently off. It'll be red. If I click on it, it's green. So now I'm see I'm changing the background color of that button based upon that boolean point. We have another video that describes the HTML HMI wizard completely and with all the different attributes. So definitely view that video on how to use all of the different attributes for all different elements that you might want to assign to. In particular, how to set a value. We've also included some HTML examples for you to refer to. These are pre-done simple HTML pages all connecting to localhost so you can copy these files directly into a virtual directory and run them there or you can grab code snippets out of them for your own use these are in the installation directory of program files open automation software opcsystems.net HTML HMI if you have any questions about HTML HMI 
or any other questions about the full opcsystems.net product suite, visit the website opcsystems.com. There you'll see our pricing under the products page. Under the training you'll see other videos on other products as well as that HTML HMI wizard video that I was referring to. And under the contact page you'll find our contact information. You're welcome to set up a free web consultation to review the HTML HMI product as to how it could meet some of your application requirements. And if you have any questions about implementing any of the features contact our support team at 303-679-0898 or support at opcsystems.com.